Hello, 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 and welcome to Anjanette's World. Previously, Take a Food's Advice podcast that I had started with my brother, and we're just going to get right into the meat um, of the matter. We're still studying, well, we're starting, we're beginning to study the book of Matthew. So we'll say a prayer because I need it. Father God, we thank you for sweet sleep on last night. Heavenly Father, the great I am, everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace, the great I am. We thank you, that Lord, that we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. We thank you for your mercy and your grace and your love and your kindness. We thank you for your guidance, Lord. We need you, Father God. Word my mouth, Lord. Teach us, Lord, as we go through this lesson, Lord. Give us new revelations, Lord. Reveal your, your purpose for us, God. In Jesus' name, give us a heart to do your will, Lord. Give us a heart to hunger and to thirst after you and to serve you. Give us a heart to seek your kingdom, Father God. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven, Lord. We thank you, Lord. Strengthen me, Lord. Enlighten me, Lord. Let me be humble, Lord. In Jesus' name. We thank you. We give you all the glory, all the honor, all the praise. We rebuke the spirit of fear in the name of Jesus, for you have not given us the spirit of fear, but of power, love, and a sound mind, Lord. And we thank you for love, power, and a sound mind. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 So we are going to start with Matthew 1 and 1. We'll do 1 and 1, and, and we'll also do verse 2. Because, you know, the first part of Matthew is genealogy. And, and a lot of times we skip over that part, who begot who, and he begot who, and she begot. And a lot of times we skip over that because it's boring, I'm guilty. But the reason they put it in there for us to know the bloodline, where, where it started, where it came from. And that's because even us, there's things in our bloodline that still affects us today. There's blessings and there's cursings that, that, that's in our genealogy that still affects us currently. So we'll start with Matthew 1 and 1. It says, the book of the generation of Jesus Christ, the son of David, the son of Abraham. Generation, I'm going to define it as all the offspring that are at the same stage of descent from a common ancestor. We have the same ancestor, the same grandma, the same mom, the same great grandma. The average interval of time between the birth of parents and the birth of their offspring. So basically generation is defined as your bloodline. It, 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 it Not only your bloodline, but what generation are you in? Generation Y, Generation X, baby boomers. It's, it, the generation is the time that you came along. What generation was you in? And so Matthew is talking about the generation of Jesus Christ. The generation that was around when Jesus Christ was walking in the flesh on this earth. So he's talking about that generation. I think I'm generation X. So whatever's going on in this time is the is my generation. So this is the generation of Jesus Christ. The time that he was alive in the flesh. 
So, and, 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 and notice it says not only Jesus Christ, but it goes back to his bloodline, the son of, or who he came from in the, in the, in the man part of him. And that was the son of David, the son of Abraham. I'm getting somewhere with this. Be patient. Some of these names have scandal associated with them. Dysfunction, if you may. Um, dysfunction is a big word. It's a common word in today's society. And, and, and we're always saying, who's dysfunctional? Or I came from a dysfunctional family. But your dysfunction does not define who you are, who you can be, or where you're going. We all come from some type of dysfunction. No need to be ashamed. We're ashamed. We'd be ashamed of our dysfunction if, if, if our mother had an addiction or our father had an addiction or if, if we were poor. We get ashamed of that because I believe we get ashamed because we think of ourselves more highly than we ought to, you know, because it's other people in your situation and worse, was brought up in your situation and even worse. But we're like, me? Why me? No, you just build on that and you keep going. Nothing to be ashamed of. The, the enemy wants us to be ashamed. God loves us. He does, He never wants us to be ashamed. That's why he said he'd give us beauty for ashes. So God will take that dysfunction and make it into beauty and give honor to it. Now we're, we're talking about Jesus Christ. It says the book of the generation of Jesus Christ. This is the generation of Jesus Christ. Who was Jesus Christ? He was the, the, the son of David, the son of Abraham in the flesh. That's his lineage. That's where he came from. Can anything good come out of Nazareth? So he had, he had his background was not just of uh, royalty and honor, right? Abraham, let's talk about who his lineage, Abraham, and Abraham is mentioned in Matthew 1 and 1, also in the Old Testament. Our blessings uh, comes from the promise that God made to Abraham, but Abraham was a liar. Abraham lied twice and said that his wife, Sarah, was his sister so that he would not be murdered because Sarah was beautiful, right? And so when Abraham went places, these two places, he would say that she's my sister. In a way, it was a half lie, half, but a lie is a lie is a lie. She was his half sister, but they were married. And so he would go, he went to Egypt and he went to uh, another, uh, uh, King Abimelech took his wife. And because that she was indeed his wife, they were cursed because of this. And they did not, not know. They thought that was his sister. And we can find the, that story if you want to jot it down and go back and read later. Genesis 12 verses 10 through 20, and that's when he went to Egypt and he told her, say, you're my sister, at least they kill me for your beauty. And then in Genesis 22, there's another story with King Abimelech where he took him, uh, took Sarah as his to be his wife and he was cursed and he didn't even know that that was Abraham's life, a wife. But still, but still, even after Abraham lied twice, in Genesis 12 and 3, God told Abraham, and I will bless them that bless thee. What? This dysfunctional man. And curse him that curse thee, and thee shall have all families of the earth, and in thee all families of the earth shall be blessed. This is where Jesus came from, the son of. David, the son of Abraham. And let us talk about David. David was an adulterer. He committed adultery with Uriah's wife, Bathsheba. He also, we can find this in 2 Samuel 11. Um, not only were, was he, David, an uh, adulterer, he was a murderer. 
He sent Uriah to the front line to be killed in battle. Not only did he send him to the front line, he sent him to the front line and told and, and told the uh, commander, Joab, make sure you put him on the front line in the heat of the battle. And when the battle gets strong and you guys are getting ready to be overtaken, draw back from him. Let him fight alone. Yeah, David was out cold. But still, this is what the word says about David. And we're going to go to uh, about David's kingdom in 2 Samuel 7, 12 through 16. Just giving you these verses if you want to go back and study on your own, because we're supposed to study on our own. Even after getting the word, you have to be a workman uh, and, and get into that word yourself. Study to show yourself approved, a workman not ashamed. So, and when thy, it says, and when thy days be fulfilled and thou shalt sleep with thy fathers, I will set up thy seed after thee, which shall proceed out of thy bowels and I will establish his kingdom. He shall be, he shall build an house for my name and I will establish the throne of his kingdom forever. So this adulterer, this murderer, God is telling him that I'm going to establish your kingdom forever. Sometimes we get we think we went so low and did so horribly bad that God can't or won't forgive us. We think that we're the lower of the lowest of low. That's the enemy. He wants you to be consumed in what you did. You're not, you are not what you did. Okay. Repent, move on, let it go. And, and and people have to let it go. If God lets it go, then who is people to keep coming and reminded uh, what you did? Because what you did is not who you are. We have to remember that. And it says, I will be his father. Is there a greater father than God? No. And he shall be my son. We are sons and daughters of father God himself. If he commit iniquity, I will chastise him. Yeah, there are consequences to our iniquity and the sin that we commit. Um, just because God tells us, I'm going to make you great, does not mean it, it, you have a path to do what you want. That, that you can just sin because you're, you're bought with a price and you're God's, you're his, he, you're his son, you're his daughter. He's your father and fathers, they discipline their children when they are wrong. So, so don't think because you are blessed and you are a child of God, that things will not happen when you transgress against God. When you sin, when you live in iniquity, there are consequences. And, 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 and David had a, a huge consequence, him and Bathsheba. Just like he sent Uriah to that front line, David lost a son. David and Bathsheba lost their first son together. He died. I will chastise him with the rod of men and with stripes of the children of men. But my mercy, that's the thing. See, God's mercy is everlasting. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah. His mercy, even when we mess up, even when uh, we are disciplined, his mercy is still there. Because of his mercy, I was not consumed. Hallelujah. But my mercy shall not depart from him. As I took it from Saul, whom I put away from before thee. So uh, God's mercy can be taken if, if you just become reprobate. There is such a thing as reprobate. And you're finding your sin and you desire sin and, and you're not going to turn away because you say, God, know your heart. He know your heart and he knows a wicked heart also. So we can be reprobate and God can turn away from us. We don't like to hear that part of God. We want to hear all about the mercy and the grace of God. But some people are reprobate and that's 
sad. And it's not only sad to us, it's sad to God because his desire is that no man shall perish. That's why he came. That's why he he was wounded for our transgressions and he was bruised for our iniquities because he went through all of that for us. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. It was the only one that we was going to have true, true peace ever because he did that. And by his stripes, we are healed. We're healed of, of not just sickness and disease. We're healed from death and destruction. Hallelujah, Jesus. 16, in thine house and thy kingdom shall be established forever before thee. Thy throne shall be established forever. So, uh, so God made this promise, this covenant to David, the, the, uh, to David, the son of Abraham. And he had made the promise to Abraham that I will make you a father of many nations. And Jesus Christ is in that genealogy. Who is greater than Jesus Christ? He is the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords. He is the great I am. He is Jehovah. Hallelujah. He's Yahweh. Thank you, God. So by tracing Jesus' ancestry back to King David, Matthew connects Jesus with his royal heritage, the promise in the flesh, Jesus in the flesh, the, the, the man part of Jesus, the, the, the part of Jesus that was uh, came through the womb of a woman, that part of Jesus, so that we can relate. We can relate. What if Jesus was not born uh, of a woman and he had no background, no heritage, and he just popped up? There would be, uh, where did he come from? Who is he? We would have had all kinds, the world, they, they already had all type of things to say about him back then. But can you imagine? We wouldn't have thought that he was a real man, a real person who felt what we feel today, the pain, the hurt, the sacrifice, the pain of the cross, the embarrassment of the cross. He had to come through a line and he came through the line that God had already made a covenant with his own covenant. And he sent himself wrapped up in the flesh. Hallelujah, Jesus. That's a whole nother story, but so that's the man part of Jesus, right? And we know his spiritual genealogy started in Genesis, also the beginning. The God part of Jesus, right? So we will go ahead. Uh, well, I'll just read it. Genesis 1 and 1. And this is the spiritual part of Jesus. The, the, his genealogy started in Genesis. Genesis, where it said, in the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. He's been since the beginning, even though he made these covenants with Abraham, with David. God was before Abraham and before David. Huh? So, it, he worked it out. And to us, it's, it it seems like it's just going in 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 chronological order. But he worked this out from the beginning, and we're living it. But it's already worked out. Our salvation is already worked out. Eternal life is already worked out. God starts different than we start, right? So, and we're going to do verse two, tie it all in together. Okay, Genesis. No, we're, we're Matthew one and two, and we're going to go into some more sons. Abraham begot Isaac. 
Remember Isaac? And I, I, I remember Abraham was going to sacrifice Isaac. And God provided the lamb in the bush. See, that's another one of God working it out. He, 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 he the beginning at the end, the end at the beginning. His sense of time is not our our sense of time. When when he already when he when he had told Abraham to sacrifice his son, he already had provided the lamb. Abraham didn't know it, but the lamb was already going to be in the bush. He just wanted to see Abraham's obedience. That's the same for us. It's already provided for you. What you're trying to figure out, it's already provided for you. It, it's already there. It's just waiting for you and your obedience. You to be obedient to God. You to be led by the Spirit. You. It says obedience is better than sacrifice. If you're obedient, he'll provide the sacrifice and bless you. Hallelujah. So it says in Isaac, we got Jacob and Jacob, we got Judah and Judas and Judah and his brother. So we're going to, we're going to go back and talk about this lineage since we just read it. So Isaac had a son named Jacob. Remember, Isaac was the son of Abram, Abraham, Abraham changed to Abram, the father of many nations. And so the same Isaac, he had a son named, well, he had twins, Jacob and Esau. And Jacob was like, uh, well, it just said Jacob was like a tr trickster. I don't know if that's what his name meant. I might have read that somewhere before, but. He stole his brother's Esau birthright by deception. And what he did is when it was time for, for Isaac to die, uh, it was time for him to give the blessings to his son. And he wanted to give it to the blessings first to his firstborn son, Esau. But Jacob and his mother conspired and Jacob pretended to be Esau, and he got the blessing that was supposed to be his brother's. He tricked his dad because his dad couldn't see good. So he put on some, some fur to make his arms hairy like his brother's, and he tricked him. So this same trickster, this same guy, this same man that got his blessing by trickery had 12 sons and his sons are the 12 the patriot arcs of the 12 tribes of Israel huh and why why God could have used anybody but he used the son of Abraham. Because Jesus was going to come through this line. So uh, they were blessed under the covenant that God made with Abraham. Genesis 49, 9 through 10, Judah is a lion's well. From the prey, my son, thou art gone up. He stooped down. He couched as a lion. And as an old man, who shall rouse him up? The scepter, which is the symbol of power, shall not depart from Judah, nor a lawgiver law from between his feet until Shiloh, who is shy of him to whom it belongs? What belongs? He to whom the, the kingdom belongs. The scepter, the power. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Oh 
man. Um, and unto him shall the gathering of the people be. So when it was time for Jacob to give the blessing, he gave his blessing to Judah. And Judah was the fourth son. And isn't it uh, wonderful? because everything about Jesus is wonderful, that in Revelation 5 and 5, Jesus is referred to of the lion of the tribe of Judah. So that, that um, in Genesis 49, that lion's whip, which is a cub, he became the lion of the tribe of Judah. And why a lion? Because the lion is the king. Lion is, is a symbol of the king of the jungle. Jesus is king of it all. So just a little explanation. Although Judah is only the fourth son of Leah, he is expressively, see, he won the, he, 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 he wasn't even the wife that he loved son. He was Leah's son, Rebecca's sister. He is expressly depicted in Genesis as assuming a leadership role among the 10 eldest brother, including speaking up against killing Joseph. When they wanted to kill Joseph, Judah spoke up, don't kill him negotiating with his father regarding Joseph's demand that Benjamin be brought down to Egypt because the only way Joseph was going to continue to help his brethren after they um, threw him in the pit and then he became overseer of Egypt and could save their lives with provision. So they went down, they gave uh, Joseph, filled them up with everything they needed. Then they had to go back because they needed more stuff. And and Joseph was, was like, unless I see your youngest brother, I won't, I won't, I won't give you anything else. So Judah pleaded and, and he said he would, his son would be okay. Benjamin would be okay. And pleading with Joseph after the latter secrets, the silver cup into Benjamin's bag, he pleaded that Joseph would have mercy and wouldn't kill him. Kill him. So Judah, Judah took the leadership role. Even though he wasn't the eldest. Judah's position is further enhanced through the downfall of his older brothers. Reuben, the eldest, give up his birthright through sexual misconduct with Jacob's concubine, Bilhah. If you want to find that, that's in Genesis 35, 22. He slept with his dad's concubine, his wife, one of his wives. And the bloody revenge taken by Simeon and Levi following the rape of their uh, sister Dinah. And you want to find that? That's in Genesis chapter 34. So this disqualified them as leaders. So it's not the lion of the tribe or Reuben, even though Reuben was the eldest of the tribes, of the sons. The eternal legacy of these events are foreshadowed in the deathbed blessing of Jacob. In Jacob's, okay, that's Genesis 49, 1 through 33. In Jacob's blessing, Reuben has not the excellency, excellency to lead because thou went up to thy father's bed, then defiled it. This is what Jacob told his son. Meanwhile, Simeon and Levi are condemned as cruel and weapons of violence because they they killed the 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 man that they said raped their sister. Matter of fact, I believe 
they made a, a, a covenant with them that all their men should be circumcised. And after they were circumcised, they killed them. I believe that because they were sore and they couldn't fight back. On the other hand, Judah is praised as a lion's whip whose brothers shall bow down before thee. Judah was, he, he wasn't the one expected to have the eternal blessing. He was not the firstborn. There were three brothers older than him. So he was overlooked. He, he, he wasn't uh, Joseph, Jacob's favorite, or Benjamin, the baby son of, of the wife that he loved. So uh, he could have had that. That's kind of give you the mind of a middle child syndrome. So he he probably wasn't even expecting it. His brothers probably was not. I know they were, they probably were not expecting the eternal blessing to be in the line of um, Judah. Hallelujah. And doesn't Judah, Judah is just a strong name. God did that, the, the beginning at the end, the end at the beginning. On the other hand, J Judah is praised as a lion's whip whose brothers shall bow down before thee and the scepter shall not depart from Judah. So this is the lineage. This is the line. This is begot, begot, begot until Jesus. All right. And so Matthew begins with genealogy. It is important where you come from. It really is. There are traits that you have from relatives that you have never met. Um, for instance, I met my great grandmother, but I don't remember her that much because she was elderly when I met her. But they say that I have features like her, right? They say that I speak like her, that I have a slow draw just like her. And I have a cousin that they say she, she, she speaks like her. So there's things in your bloodline that's going to pass down. You look at the animal kingdom. Um, even with animals, they have things in them, not just physically, but it's things in them that they know. They know from parents long before them where they came from. You might want a certain breed of dog because they're known for this thing that 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 they never saw the the originator do, the original do, but it still was passed down from from, from generation to generation. That's why genealogy is important. There are traits that you have from relatives, like I said, you never met, people that lived centuries ago. Along with these traits are gifts. You know, maybe your grandpa was a mighty man of God. Now you walk in that same anointing. Now, you might have uh, been a family that come from a long line. Of, of preachers and pastors and teachers and uh, an anointing um, healers and, and, and it might even script, um, skip a generation or two but it's always somewhere in the bloodline and, and, and you even call relatives a name of, of a relative that's long gone on to glory because they act like them they walk like them you look at them and be like, boy, if you are not your grandpa, if you don't look, you everything about you. My son, I have a son and his dad died really early. My son was really young, um, really, really young. And I want to say maybe one or two, but his mannerisms, are that of his dad's and people that uh, he come in contact with that knew his dad, they say the same, his mannerisms is just like his dad. His walk is just like his dad. His, his, his you know, calmness is just like his dad. 
his parenting, the love of his children is just like his dad. And, and he was not raised by his dad because his dad passed early. It's important to know where you came from. Some people don't know. And, and, and those people that don't know, most of the time, there's something missing to them. They want to know. But God heals their hearts so that it won't be a yearning always, you know, that they're missing something. Where, why am I like this? Where did this come from? What's in my family? Even diseases that's in your family. You know, when you go to the doctor, you have to do it history. You have to do history. If anybody in your family had blood, high blood pressure, anybody in your family had cancer, because where you came from, things pass on down through the bloodline. So you might have a great auntie or auntie that she was mean and bossy and, 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 and you might act just like her. There were covenants that some of our ancestors made. Yep. Covenants that some of them made knowingly and unknowingly with witches and warlocks, demons, and, and even Satan that became generational curses. That there, there, there's, uh, things uh in in your bloodline that that ancestors they might have uh went to uh wizards witches warlocks uh a woman might have been messing with her husband and she went she went to the voodoo priestess or voodoo doctor to get a spell to bring her husband home or to make that woman sick so her husband wouldn't want her anymore that 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 maybe make her uh even death they might go to these voodoo priestess and and uh, witch doctors and sorcerers and fortune tellers but you're opening up a door spiritually because the weapons of warfare our weapons of warfare are not carnal they're not fleshly they're spiritual the, the 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 real is the spiritual this is temporary so just like this body this earth is going to go back to the dust and it's temporary the things in the physical is temporary they're going to go to the dirt dust they're going to fade they're going to rot they're going to go away but the spiritual which we cannot see right now clearly it's all around us. So when these ancestors, even ourselves, when we go to these fortune tellers and, and these witch doctors and these voodoo doctors and we want to cast spells on people and we want to know our future, you're opening up doors, doors that should not be open. And so these doors, unless you know they're open and some things the only way they go by uh, away is only by prayer and fasting. So if you're not prayer, praying and fasting, these doors are open and these demons are coming through and not just during your generation or our ancestors' generation. They have a legal right to come through because you open the door, our ancestors open the door. So they're coming through and they're affecting our children, our grandchildren, our nieces and our nephews from generation to generation to generation because nobody has shut the door. So sometimes it has to be you to shut the door. You have to fast, you have to pray. And so lately my prayer being, Father God, please close any and every demonic door that was open on my behalf by me or by ancestors, knowingly and unknowingly. Break that, Lord. Let that door be closed. Let that curse be broken. That's why, you know, in some families, you might have a lot of homosexuality. You might have a lot of women that are not married um a, a lot of divorces a lot of um maybe cancer run through the bloodline just uh uh great grandma died of breast cancer grandma died of breast cancer uh 
then the mom died of brain, breast cancer. Now the little teenage girl got breast. Just, just, just going through and ravaging um, families. Uh, poverty can be a generational curse. Sickness, death, addiction. Everybody, everybody in the family is addicted to alcohol or drugs. Somebody got an addiction. Young kids, uh, they coming, they coming out thinking they uh, uh, another another sex. They coming out with homosexual tendencies. These are demonic influences that some door is open that we have to close. We have to know how to pray. We don't have to, we have to know how to fast. Um, you're tired. You're tired of all of these. Uh, you're tired of every, every time you get married, you're divorced. Low self-esteem. Just so poverty, generation after generation after generation. Families cannot get along. Just every, every time you get together is discord. These are curses, y'all. Let me have a sip of coffee. God, help us, Lord. Okay, so even anger. That was me. Raise your hand when I when I hit you. Raise my hand when it hit home. Raise your hand when you can say ouch. Anger. I'm saying ouch. Because anger was a generational curse in my family. I broke it. Hallelujah, Jesus. The devil is a liar. And let me tell you, I kept failing that test, failing that test. And, and it didn't start with me because it's people before me that had anger par problems and that it was okay to be angry and it was okay to fight. It was okay to fight dirty. It was okay. So I kept failing this death test. And every time I would fail this test, I'd be like, oh my God. Uh, I would be devastated. I would cry because then I'm I'm feeling like now I'm going to be chastised by God. I felt that test or, or now what I've been praying for, my blessing. I, I needed this blessing and I keep failing this same test. So I had to pray about it and I had to humble myself. A lot of these generational you know, curses can be broken by humbling ourselves. That's why God said, if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray, seek my face, turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven and heal their land, heal their curses, heal their infirmities, draw the enemy out of their presence right? So finally, I start passing that anger test. I remember it because it hasn't been that long ago, maybe a few years ago. And, and you know, people would say things to me or, 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 or attack me in some type of way that I felt disrespected. And disrespect was a big, no, no, I'm not going to let them talk to me like that. I'm not going to let them treat me like that. But now that I learned the key to prayer, humbling myself, and, and let God fight my battles and not, not, not wanting or wishing harm on the people that didn't hurt me in some type of way, but just knowing that God will vindicate me in whatever way is none of my business, but I trust him, hallelujah, it's nothing like it. And I find that now that I've, I I know this, that people that I love and I care for, I will I will tell them this, and it offends people because they still see. Well, you wasn't like that. You used to do this. You should understand how I feel. I do, but I'm just telling you the way to victory. I'm telling you, when you let it go, God picked it up. When you really let it go and trust in the Father, he prepares that table in the presence of your enemy. But only when you truly let it go. We play with ourselves. We say, well, don't play with it, don't play with it, don't play with it. We play with it. And we say we let it go. 
where we really don't let it go. We say we done with it, but, but we, 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 we have something in us that we want to see that person go through something or that person hurt or that person. We want to see it or we, we, we try, we're steady trying to prove ourselves. No, just let it go. Just really give it to God who's greater than our father. In the beginning, God created heaven and earth. He's the only one. It's good to know the generational blessings in your bloodline as well so that you know how wonderfully made you are, so that you recognize your gifts and your callings. My great-great-grandpa was a preacher. Why do I love the word so much? Why do God break it down to me and make it so real to me? My grandma loved church and loved the word. And, and she studied to learn how to read, read the Bible. And she, she sat me down to help her learn how to read the Bible. She was planting that seed. And I love the word so much. And God reveals the word. And I'm like, oh my God. And I know that's the Holy Spirit. It's not that I'm so special. He, he does it for others. And he will do it for those who, who get in that word and say, I don't understand it. It's not real to me. So just like all this stuff we, we talked about, it only came from one and two verses in the Bible. But it takes you all over and it makes it things uh, you understand and it makes it real to you. And he builds on this. What we talked about today, he's still going to reveal stuff to me and you in what we studied today. Two little verses, but they're not little. Nothing in his word is little. It's more is living. And it's real. And the more we get in it, the more we study it, the more we hear it, the stronger we get, the more we want it, the more, the more we need it, the hungrier we become for it. God is amazing. His word is amazing. We have Christians that don't read the Bible. How do you get your strength? How do you get your knowledge? By just... Um, uh, Hearing, hearing is the word is perfect. But after you hear it, go on and feed yourself. Go on and eat. Because if the preacher sit in front of you and he the only one with a plate of food, you're going to be hungry after you get up from that table. So even when you go get that meat from, from church, from, from, from the word, from, from the internet, you still read it yourself. You still meditate it on you. You still meditate on it yourself. You got to break it down because there's things in here that, that we haven't even covered. That we don't see yet. <laughs> and that God to reveal something else to you. Okay, it's good to know the generation blessings in your bloodline as well so that you know how wonderfully you are, wonderfully made you are, so that you recognize your gifts, your callings, to recognize that your ancestors conquered, achieved, overcame, put the fire up under you to keep the legacy going. Have you heard sometimes, like, no. I'm going to make my grandma proud, right? She was too good to me. Then sometimes you think, I know my grandma is, she is just up there just smiling. If she could see me, I know, she, you know, she, she didn't forgot this, this world. But when I see her again, but you, you still imagine that all everything she did for me was not in vain. I still use things that my grandma taught me when I was a 11 year old girl. I still use those things. I garden. That's from her. I hated it back then. It was a big embarrassment to a, a, a child 
of 11 years old that had her mind on other things, not realizing what she was teaching me, not only in the physical, but uh, in the spiritual, the planting of the seed, the harvest, the work that goes into it, the blessing. Not only the blessing for myself, my grandma used to pack her freezer full and give it to other grandkids and other people that that she loved and cared for. So, so her her harvest was not just for herself. Your harvest, my harvest, my harvest is not just for myself. I got children. I have grandbabies. I have siblings and nieces and nephews and, 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 and people that I love with all my heart. So, so that legacy, you be the legacy. That legacy makes you want to be better, to, to, to do better, to seek more, to build on what they started. The people before you. I am Anjanette, a daughter of Ophelia and Freddie, granddaughter of Inez and JB and Elnora and Joan, great granddaughter of Alina uh, Wade, and, and we say Papa Wade. I say Big Mom and Papa. Right? And so on and so on. And I don't know my dad's. Uh, uh, dad and, and his people. But guess what? I've been on uh, Ancestry.com because it's interesting to me. I, I want to know who are they? Where did they come from? And and, and it's good to know too. So uh, it's people that don't know their lineage and where they lineage and where they came from. And then they intermingle with brothers and sisters getting married and having babies. And so it's, it's good to know bloodline is, is that's why Matthew starts it off with bloodline and where you came from in the beginning. Genesis starts it off from the beginning because humanity needs to know where we all come from. We all come from one God. It's only one God. So how can we be racist? How can we hate one another? We come from one God. It's not a black God and a white God. It's not a God for Chinese people. And it's one God. Okay. Genesis means from the same. We also may say from the beginning. It do mean from the beginning too. But Genesis means from the same. Just like the Old Testament in the beginning. Matthew starts in the beginning. The same way that Genesis start, Matthew start. From the same because they, they, they really start the same way. The, 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 the beginning of it all is the same. We think of the will of life. The will of life, it just keeps going. It just, it, it, it's no break in there. There's one beginning. In the beginning, God created the heaven and earth. And then everything, the wheel kept going. Some things are inherited in nature, even our face, our ability, the way we speak, are in our genome, our genes, our genetics, right? That's why the beginning to know where you came from is so important. It matters. And it's sad that we lose that. That's why when the movie Roots came out, it was so good because this man traced his roots all the way back. His roots, his foundation. All the way back. And they went further back than that. They went further back than Africa. Wouldn't it be amazing if we could trace our roots all the way back? And to know which tribe we truly came from, man, that would be awesome. 
Uh, and and I just did a little more reading in because I like to go deeper to understand for myself. So in the field of molecular biology and genetics, a genome gene is all the genetic information the organism requires to function. It's in the chromosomes, things that we don't see by the naked eye but it makes everything about us who we are. And so those chromosomes is passed on from generation to generation. So now I have, I said, I have the voice of my great grandmother, right? I could, you know, you see people my color and they, two parents my color and they might have a, a baby a fair skinned white baby with blue eyes. I just seen that in the store where well, I seen the mother. The mother was uh, close to my color. I don't know what race the dad was, but the baby had blue eyes. Beautiful. It's somewhere in the genome. It's somewhere in the chromosomes. It's somewhere in the genetics. It doesn't have to be uh, from your mom. It could be from, it doesn't have to be from her mom. It could be boo, 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 way far back. We don't know where it came from, but it makes us who is our, who we are. It makes our eye color, it makes our eyebrows, what type of hair we have. It makes our, it just, all of that is in there. It's deep. Okay. John 1 and 1 says, in the beginning, now we already said Genesis 1 and 1, in the beginning God created the heaven and the earth. Now, John 1 and 1 says, in the beginning was the word. Who is the word? Jesus Christ. And the word was with God. The Father, the Son, Holy Ghost. And the word was God. So John 1 and 1. Tell us, this from the beginning, from the beginning in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. And that same word came to earth in the form of flesh, Jesus Christ. So that is telling us God's word is alive. God's word is living. Jesus is not dead. He is alive. The scriptures is the living word of God. It's there for you. It transforms. It delivers. It gives you a relationship with your father. Jesus is the word of God. So Matthew starts off his book reminding the reader where you came from and who you are. Matthew came from the generation of Jesus Christ, the son of David, the son of Abraham. If we wanted to go on back even further, you know, somebody was the son of, of Noah, the son of uh, Adam, you know. And Adam was who? The son of God. God made Adam. But because Adam did not come through the womb of a woman. He was the first man, but he was not the man to give us salvation. Jesus Christ, he came legally through the womb of a woman, born of a virgin, virgin, so that we can have salvation. Genesis 1 and 26, and God said, let us make man in our image after our likeness and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air and over the cattle and over all the earth and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. And God said, let us, who is us? God was not alone. His word is alive. God said, let there be in their words. His word is action. His word creates. His word does not go out void. 
we are descendants of Jesus Christ, the son of David, the son of Abraham, made in the likeness of God, the creator of all things and everything. That's good. I, I gotta read that again. We are. So when 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 whatever generation you in, have been in, whatever generation, just like Matthew said, the generation of Jesus Christ, the son of David, the son of Abraham. We are descendants of Jesus Christ because he was from the beginning. The son of David, the son of Abraham. And when he came, when he died, when he rose, we inherited sonship, kinship. We're made in the likeness of God. God created us in his image. God is the creator of all things and everything. So we have dominion. This is telling us we have dominion. If we look at ourselves like that as being royalty, we are royalty. We came from Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ was in a royal lineage. In the flesh, he was in a royal lineage. In the spirit, he was in a he is royalty. He is the King of Kings, the Lord of Lord, the great I am. Yahweh, Jehovah, El Shaddai. So Matthew wanted us to know, know who you come from, where you come from. It's important. And that it all originates from the beginning from God. All right, y'all. That is our lesson today. It was nice. It was good. And it was just from two, what you would say, simple verses, but we got into that deep. And because uh, you want to make the, the word real to you. You want to understand it and, 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 and break it down, study it. Tear it apart. Cross-reference. So that you can understand it. And that you can get it into your spirit and your soul. Because that's how we, we fight against the enemy. Our weapons of warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God. To the pulling down of strongholds. Casting down imaginations. And every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. And remember, we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness of high, in high places. Therefore, take unto you the whole armor of God so that you will be able to withstand in the evil day. Not only do you need the whole armor of God to withstand in the evil day, you need the whole armor of God to stand against the wiles, the tricks of the enemy. What is the whole armor of God? We need, we need our loins girded with truth. We need our feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. We need the helmet of salvation. You got to know what you know what to know. We need the breastplate of righteousness. We have to be right and righteous and standing with God. We need the, we need the shield of faith to, to withstand, to block all the quench, to put out all the fiery darks of the enemy all the tricks and the wiles of the enemy. To put them out, we need the shield of faith. And guess what? Above all, we need the sword 
of the spirit, which is the word of God. We need that word of God. That's how we cast down things. When he said, when the enemy says, you're no good, you're dirty, you say, I am fearfully and wonderfully made. You say, for unto us a child is born, a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulders, and his name shall be called. This this, this why I am more than what you said I am. Because he, this is who he is to me. He's my wonderful counselor. He's my mighty God. He's my everlasting father. He's my prince of peace. Then when they say you can't do nothing, you are no good. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I'm the head and not the tail. I am the lender and not the borrower. That's why the word of God is so important. That's why. And let me tell you this. Don't worry about uh, memorizing it. You will. You read it. You will remember it. Eventually. The more you read, the more just word, it just pop up. It'll pop up. You'll hear it in your head and you'll say it. It's good to memorize it, but focus on studying it for now. Focus on getting it in your spirit and your soul. And, and, and the, the, the sword is the sword of the spirit. The spirit will put will put them words in you and they will come out when you need them. God bless y'all. Let's pray us out. Father God, we thank you. We praise you. We give you glory and honor. We magnify your holy name. We thank you for your mercy and your grace, your love and your kindness, Lord. Go with us today in this upcoming week and this month and cover us and protect us and lead and guide us and direct our path and open our ears and our eyes to the things of the spirit, Lord. Let us be pleasing in your sight. Let us seek your word and seek your way and seek your, your spirit, Lord. Build us a firm foundation, Lord, that we know, we know without a shadow of doubt, no matter what no one else says or what's going on in the world, we know where our rock is. We know where our source is. We know where our peace comes from, our joy comes from, Lord. Fill us with a, your Holy Spirit, Lord. Let us walk in the fruit of the Spirit, Lord. In Jesus' name, we thank you. Amen. Y'all have a blessed weekend. Love you.